Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, today what we're talking about is a, a really cool subject. It's would you consider investing in older homes rather than newer homes? Now, I just did a video about new construction. Mm -hmm. uh, wait till the end of this video because I'm going to give you my opinion as a home inspector if I would buy a new home or an old home, if I was investing, if I was buying a home right okay. now. Okay. <clears throat> And let's talk about some benefits of buying, you know, older homes. Yes, there's some disadvantages, but there's some benefits. Don't you agree? Oh, I totally agree. In the meantime, do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And hit the thumbs up and share. So, Bill, one of the things I like about older homes, mm -hmm. okay, and you tell me if you agree or you don't disagree, when they built these older homes, they had more choices when it came to land, lots, okay? And if you notice, the older homes are on much bigger lots than the newer homes. The newer homes are on postage stamp sizes. Right, yeah, typically your standard traditional ranch house years ago is on a larger lot that's set back from the road a little bit more so you're not right up on the on the road, so you'll have a bigger driveway. Then you actually have backyard space. There's a little bit more space between you know the the homes left and right. Um, you just overall in our area at least would typically have more space, yeah. you know, on, on in the suburbs. So I think that's a big. I think that's a, not a big. I think it's a huge benefit of buying older yeah some people like that tight-knit group where you're close to each other because it you know there's been studies where it says it it fosters camaraderie amongst your neighbors and you know this that and the other so but i'm like i, I don't know i just a little space is kind of nice yeah one of the things i don't like about older homes is especially here in florida it's just the low ceilings yeah and some of them are lower than others it's like ridiculous i like just the low ceilings when i walk in i just feel like it's kind of weird you know what do you think of those yeah no i well that lower ceiling really makes you feel like the home is smaller and darker because the newer homes always have you know they have tall ceilings a lot of them have transom lights so you get a lot of light in the house without having the uh, invasion of privacy if you will from your neighbor because they're closer together so but it does let a lot of light in and natural light makes the house feel more open so at the end of the video, I want you to say, you know, don't say it now, but say it at the end of the video if you rather buy a newer house or an older house, you know? Here's another thing, my problem with, with um, newer houses that I like about older houses. Older houses seem like they have more character. I just feel like the new houses these days, they all look the freaking same. One after another after another. They look like, if you go down some neighborhoods, including my neighborhood, it, it was ridiculous. I, I'm painting my house, okay, <laughs> and you know we're at the main house I live in, and I'm in a HOA. Don't we won't get into that, but and we have certain choices for colors for houses. Mm -hmm. So the neighborhood is pretty big. Yeah, you know, um, but everybody, everybody, other houses is, is the they all look the same. You know. It, if you pick a color, go five houses down. That's the color on that house. Yeah, they have a small color palette to choose from there. And they're all kind of, it's like, it's what was it, Lennar. They built like four or five different style homes in the neighborhood, so. Right, and then that's, but that was typical. When a track builder comes in, they come in, they have five different elevations or so, um, you know, or maybe one model with two elevations for each model and they have four or five models. Um, so you do have a little variation, but they all tend to stay the same. You know, they're, they're really close to the same. You just get a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. They yeah. have a lot of wasted space than you than you than you build. Yeah, thank goodness the trend is starting to fade away from some of that wasted space. But you know, like we've looked at some of these that the the living room is just gigantic, and it's like, what do you do with that outside of, you know, put a bunch more couch in there, and it's just open space to walk further to the kitchen. Yeah, um, like, like my like, house, we have that thing that's what it's supposed to be like a, a mini library with that oh I yeah it's, it's just for the cats to go and hang out right right yeah it's like you have the dining room mini library and then the kitchen and living room like i never go in it's there like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think i've sat on that couch in like three four years 
Right. Yeah. I, my parents' house, they had an older house, but you know, it had the two living room set up. So one was like, but this was kind of a thing because this was my grandmother's thing. It was they have the formal living room for the holidays mm -hmm. and special events and occasions. And then they had the everyday living room. Yeah. So, but that was a thing yeah. for her. The, the benefit of a new build is, you know, the today's codes, they're using today's code. So right. it's more updated, you know, Back in the day, they kind of, you know, some of the houses in certain years, they used what polybutane plumbing, which is like a great pipe, as like gold wedding bands, but it was known to leak, you know? So now they're using different kind of plumbing, but even, I just think that any kind of plumbing that you use in a house eventually will wear off. Oh, of you course. Know? I mean, nothing's permanent, you know? And then building codes were different, you know, the way they built things were different. And then, you know, I mean, if you go way, way back, you're talking, you know, dimensional lumber versus non-dimensional lumber. And it's, you know, the actual two by four was actually two inches by four inches, not, you know, an inch and three quarter by two and a half. So it's- Well, that's what the whole thing is. I can tell you one thing about these older houses, especially down in Florida, mm -hmm. you know, the old Florida houses, the ones built in the 50s and 60s, they're going to be here long after those new construction houses are way gone and knocked down. Yeah, I mean, that wood is almost, because that's like old growth pine. Mm -hmm. That stuff is like iron. We remodeled the house back, I mean, this is, you know, 20 some odd years ago when I was younger. Um, you know, we remodeled a house that was built in the 1920s. Now, you go back into an era like that and the homes had taller ceilings. You know, just yeah. it, it was, it's, it's funny how trends change, but when we were trying to um, fix some floor joists and repair them and replace them, because obviously, you know, it had termites at some point in time and, you know, we were renoing, but it, it was so difficult to cut that wood. I mean, we went through blades well, the, and bits. It was, you, you, it was have iron. To, you have to admit that older homes are built with better quality materials. Materials. Absolutely. Engineering but, today's standard is better. But yeah. the materials, I think, are not as the, good. The materials that they use yeah. in today's construction is just cheap. It may look good, but it's cheap, cheap materials that they use. You know, back then, they really, you know, even the sheetrock or the plaster some houses have. Oh, yeah, my first house had plaster. Yeah, it was just, those things, those things were built incredible. Yeah. And me, like, I love love like the old victorian houses you know they were built yeah. like over like a hundred years ago yep and those you know they built them when they used you know like a handsaw you know that they were going like this to cut the wood and you know drive the yeah. nails and stuff and those houses i think they're built better than any houses today they'll, they'll withstand anything yeah, I mean, it's like the houses are like petrified almost, <laughs> you know, a lot of them because the wood's so, there's a huge difference between the fast growth pine that we have today, you know, and yeah. the old growth pine. It's just more dense, it's more stable, the old stuff, and it looked better. Um, you know, just go into an old house. Yeah, it creaks and cricks, but that adds to its character, you know, and then you can renovate those and you have a lot of, of the modern amenities. Yeah, so here's one thing I wouldn't buy in Florida. I would not buy a wood frame house. Now, let me rephrase that. I would buy a wood frame house if it's block on the first floor and the second floor is wood right. frame. Or I'd, I would buy a wood frame house if it's on stilts. And if, obviously, they're not going to put cinder blocks on stilts to, you know, that high up. I would buy a wood frame. But I wouldn't buy an old ranch that's wood. Um, I, don't really, I haven't really ran into a lot of homes that are new construction that are ranches that are wood framed anymore. No, that is kind of an old, they don't really do that much anymore. You know, there's issues with insurance with those sometimes. Um, termites. Termites are a big deal with those. You know, issues with hurricanes and such could be an issue depending on the house. Um, it's just, it's just frowned upon in certain, you know, areas. Now, you know, there's different types of construction now. You know, we've got metal houses um, cast in place. They're starting to develop or use. I mean, it was developed years and years ago, and they did. They use that stuff in commercial forever. Mm -hmm. You know, a long time ago. Um, you know, and those are really cool. They they just require a little bit of a unique way to do things when you do that. But um, you know, it's just it's different. But a wood frame house, I'd probably steer away from that. Yeah, personally. I would steer away with that yeah. and stuff. But you know, just me personally. Other people don't care, but me personally. And you know, buying an older house, you know, you're going to you know, 
you know, the windows probably need changing, but that's what I like about it. It's like you could take an old house and you could customize it to your, what you want, what your, what your decor is, you know, you could, you could rip things out. What are you going to do? Take a brand new house and right. go in there and you're going to rip out that kitchen that is new? Right. Yeah. You're not going to go tear stuff out like that typically, you know, and that's a, a, a one of the a pro to buying maybe an older house is that it might be slightly more cost effective. You'd have to, to weigh it out based on, excuse me, things that you need like, oh, I like that yard. You know, I like the extra space or I like the bigger front yard or what have you. And then, yeah, maybe I have to, you know, at the end of the day, I'm spending the same amount of money as I would buying a new house but I have the yard and, you know, like my first house, I had a, a huge paver patio, palm trees, hammock, you know, big barbecue area in the back, stone pizza oven thing, um, you know, that I built. I could do it myself. And mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that over the years. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, there's a, it's to each their own on that stuff. Here's one of the biggest benefits of buying an older home. You save money. They're cheaper. Yeah, they can be significantly less money, you know, even if they're partially renovated or need full renovations. Like I said, you can, you have to weigh that out. And then how handy you are. Are you going to pay somebody to do it or are you going to pull the permits and do it yourself? You can yeah, save a lot of money. DIY, I mean, if you, you, are you handy, you know, and then you, yeah. could, you could do so much with an older home. Yeah. And the whole thing is, yeah, just, you know, what I would do if I was buying an older home is I would definitely have a home inspector go in there and make a list of all the problems. Yeah, of course. You know, then after you, they make the list of the whole problems, figure out a budget if you could even fix it, you know, in your budget. But, you yeah. know, something else, too, that is kind of people overlook a lot. But you know what that neighborhood is going to be like. It's huge. You know, like, you know, you know, I was going to bring that up as a bonus one, but yeah, it, it, you don't, you know what it is. It's, you know, like there's a neighborhood in Clearwater. It's over in the Lakeview and Highland area. Mm -hmm. And I grew up here and that was there. And I mean, that's where I worked at the fire department too, but that neighborhood hasn't changed since the seventies when it was built. Like it's, it's not an HOA, there's no CDD, any of that stuff, but Everybody generally, I mean, and this is not a tiny neighborhood. This is, these are some, you know, we didn't have neighborhoods as you traditionally think of them today. They were just like suburb locations per se. But, you know, that general area, everybody takes care of their houses and they've looked exactly the same for 20 plus years. I mean, I worked there for 20 years. It's, they, they all look the same. Nothing's really changed. So, you know, the landscape's more mature. Um, the, the feel of the neighborhood is going to be the feel of the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, um, you know where, the, yeah, you know where the, different. the trees, you know, some of the trees, trees have been there from the beginning. Yeah. They're beautiful, giant oak trees. And, you know, it's just, it, there's more character to the neighborhood. See these, a lot of these new neighborhoods, they're building them, you know, the builders go in there and they're building them in areas that, A, the land is developed. It's not like you could build more land. I guess you could fill in water, but that's not really happening. Um, but they're buying cheaper and cheaper. They're finding cheap land to build on. Okay, and they're building to make it cost effective. They're building a lot of houses. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what that neighborhood is going to be like. You don't know if, if you have to take your life in your own hands just pulling out of that neighborhood. <laughs> uh, that's a big that's a that's a big peeve pee, pee of mine is because I go into so many neighborhoods. Some of these neighborhoods are like, come on to pull out. You have to yeah. like and that's all neighborhoods, even some of these older ones uh, like on US 19 and Palm Harbor. Um, there's that's a couple one a neighborhood around here. Yeah, it's it's you you that's you know you're pulling out into a major highway mm -hmm. from your neighborhood exit. So and there's no other way to go around because there's only one entrance, one exit in, in that particular neighborhood. So you know you've got to look at those things and then maybe when you you came on the weekend and it's not so much traffic, but you know come check that stuff out. You know I know we've mentioned this before. You know at different times of the day, different days of the week, but um, you know even though it's an older neighborhood, you know, but it's. The other thing, too, is you'll have less overdevelopment in old neighborhoods because everything's already built and yep. everybody already owns the land. Yep. And because in where we live, in the county we live in, it's the overdevelopment is so much that it's stupid. Yeah, I mean, we're developing a lot, particularly out on the east side of the county. 
um, you know, Wesley Chapel, Zephyr Hills, Land of Lakes, you know, that's where the building is because we've gotten to that point. Before it was Trinity, you know, we went from East, you know, mm -hmm. Palm Harbor to East Lake to yeah, Trinity. Yeah, those, those, you know, those like, are the neighborhoods around here, you know, and they, they just keep keep going <laughs> they just keep going <laughs> they finish out one and then they move to the next one you know ten, you know and it takes some time you know but you know but then the pro of that if you go into a new neighborhood you know you're getting in on the ground floor so because there's no infrastructure specifically set up you might have to drive a little further to the grocery store various things you know you can save some money that way and get into you know a newer how a new or a newer house and then you got to drive, but you know, you pay your dues, but then you've also, you have, that's your maximum, you know, equity gain typically, you know, if it's, if it fits into your specific, you know, frame. So let me ask you this, would you, would you buy a older house as an investment or to live in it? Absolutely. Would you buy a brand new house? Yes. So where you, where would you lean more towards a new house or an older house? It just depends on what, it really for me, it's gonna be what the house is. Like when I go to the house, I'm looking at the whole picture. Cause I know there's new construction out by me that's got huge lots and it's new construction. So that fits my You're also bill. paying a premium. Of course, you know, but then you have to weigh that out. Let's say I'm in Clearwater and I'm in a neighborhood that's got a bigger lot that's more like the new construction, but I'm in the heart of Clearwater. So your property values are higher. So you'd have to weigh, I, that's why I say you have to weigh out each one, the, the pros and cons of each one and whether or not, you know, it worked. And I, I don't mind a good project. So here's my deal. I would always buy an older home. One is, I'm a home inspector, so I know what to look for. Electrical, plumbing, cast mm -hmm. iron, if it's a septic system, if it's on a well, you know, asbestos, you know, insulation termites i know how to look at all that stuff but and we're going to do a video soon how to pick the perfect home i did one a little while ago but we're going to do another one me and bill's going to do it how to pick a perfect home and we're going to show you a house but i would not buy new construction in a new neighborhood and i know some of my clients are watching this video and your house is great <laughs> <laughs> Your location is great. Remember, everything is just an opinion. It's an opinion. That's right. what I'm saying. It's an opinion. The reason why is I like to know what things are going to look like. And I'm not going to, and I like to customize my house. Right. I want my office. I want the cabinets the way I want them. I want the closets where I want them. Mm -hmm. I want, and I'm not going to go into a brand new construction house that they just finished and has the new smell and start ripping things out to make it my own. Right. Now, if you wanted to choose a new construction and do a custom and home, do a custom, different like story. Like I said in that video, yep. on a custom home, yes, I would do it because custom homes, I would it would be a bigger lot and they're building it to my specs. I'm talking about just like going to Walmart and selecting clothes off the rack. That's right. what it is. Right. <laughs> that's how, that's the way I look at it. Right, right. You, you know, know, you have a few, like particularly now, the, the trend with new construction is in, in our area, I don't know about other areas, but in our area, the trend in new construction is they kind of have already had the uh, interior designers and architects and everything pick out everything for you for the most part. And then they'll build different styles of the same house at different times. So if you like a certain color cabinet, okay, well, the lot 26 will be done with that color cabinet and that model on this day you know so they've kind of already got it slated um you know it's it's part of a cost control yeah. and so they can control the inventory and that's the whole thing is so i'm not going to go i'm not going to go into a brand new house and start ripping things apart no, just to change that it. doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense but on a little home i'll be like before i move in i'm ripping out these floors and i'm going to put this floor because i want this floor Right. So that's where the, like in a new construction, they go, oh, well, if, you know, if let's say you have options to upgrade in that particular builder, which there are some of those around here too, um, the, uh, you know, that would be like, oh, well, this is carpet, but I want, you know, they have the option to do tile that flows throughout the kitchen and the living room. That's probably one of those things you might want to do because you're never going to match that tile. You know, you're not going to tear the tile out to put tile yeah. all the way in. It just, so you just have the builder do it. Anyways, that's it for this video. You know, watch this video over here. I picked it just for you guys. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. 
and you know hit the thumbs up share the video it really really helps and bill end of the day i'm buying used all day long hey, i enjoy used houses they're they're nice you know so you have nothing against buying a used house no nothing at all i, I buy a new or a used it just depends on what fits what i need you know and that's it's just i think the way i would do it what about for investment like you're gonna rent oh, it out? I, if i was gonna oh no i would do either or still yeah. uh and i if depending on where it's at and just in our general area i would lean towards new construction if they allow it so they don't want investors buying a lot of those in some of those neighborhoods so they they put restrictions on you um but if they do allow it then i would be like the first one in the door you know mm -hmm. when they broke ground on a new neighborhood if i if they allowed investors to buy and rent um i would do that because you're going to get the best deals and then even if they were six months a year out i would lock that deal in today and then you know because now you've got a year of equity before the house is even started sure you know, yeah. so you can get some really good deals doing that. Uh, that just comes down to your plan. Yeah. Hey, so like I said before, I really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Thank talk you. you and have a day, great day.